one. Okay. And the Armada is a 2018. Okay, I gotcha. So it's not starting? Right. Okay. Uh, it'll start intermittently. I'll drive it down the road and park it, and next time I try to start it, it won't start. And then when you try to start it, what happens? Does it click or does it crank and not start or does it not make any noise at all? No, it doesn't. It really, most of the time, it doesn't do anything. I mean, the, the instrument panel will come out and that's just about it. Okay. All right. All right. And this is, this is intermittent? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. All right. So just the battery had been was, was replaced in 2021. And other than that, nothing else has been replaced. Is that right? 28 months. But my husband said, I'm sorry, what'd you say? Anything else been replaced other than the battery? Uh, well, the reason for my call is I've been at the Nissan place and they're out of answers for me. I gotcha. I gotcha. So, uh, did yes. First of all, we started with replacing the brake sensor, which, you know, on the electronic start, uh, the connection, they said, you know, it might be caused by the brake sensor. So they replaced that. Um, still had the problem, took it back, and the guy said, well, you need to replace, we need to replace all the LED light, uh, bulbs in your tail, your brake light mechanism, which made a little sense, but not a lot, and still having the same problem. Took it back over there yesterday, um, after that, and... Went, went back home and <laughs> long story short, I had to write another check and uh, in their facility, it would not start. Okay. So after having changed the brake sensor, uh, you know, I'm thinking the guy's just following a one, two, three, four list of, you know, mm -hmm. mechanical issues. And I uh, guess the, the Nissan <clears throat> troubleshoot list. Right. And we've done step one and two and now we're still at the same place, four hundred dollars later. Do you know if there are any codes in the computer? Do you know if the if the computer is communicating? Uh, well, how do I know that? How how would I? Well, the guy would. Uh, the technician should know this, and if they didn't write it down right. on any of your invoices or receipts. You could always ask the service manager, hey, is, is, the, is the main engine computer communicating? And if so, are there any any codes related to either the starting circuit or any communication yeah. codes? Well, I'm just operating under the assumption that it is <clears throat> because I keep saying, well, we've hooked it up. We don't see any problems. Okay. And, uh, so well, I was thankful yesterday whenever it wouldn't start under their Porta Cachet. Right. <laughs> drive through. Well, came back, went back, went back home, got my checkbook, went back and tried to start the car and it wouldn't start right sure. there in their facility. So they got to see what I've been experiencing for the last two weeks. I gotcha. So uh, a couple of things to keep in mind. So the ECM, which is the main engine computer, the engine control module does go bad a lot in this vehicle um, and it causes a no crank condition. Uh, but if that were the case, it wouldn't be able to communicate with his scan with the, the technician scanner. So he wouldn't say, oh, there's, he doesn't see anything wrong with it. So I don't think that's going to be the problem with this vehicle, with, with, with your, you know, your issue right. here. I don't think that's going right. to be the problem. But I just wanted you to be aware the ECM is a common problem. So you could ask him if the computer is communicating and ask him if there are any codes in the computer. If, if, if the yeah. ECM is communicating and there are no codes, then at that point, I would have them check for power down at the starter. Maybe we, maybe the entire circuit's working normally, or normal, and the ECM is working, the brake sensor, or the starting, the relay, all that's working, and there's power down at the starter, but the engine just simply doesn't crank over because of a bad starter. That is possible as well. Okay, now you're talking about the starter for the car? Yep, exactly. Well, surely, after having connected the, this is like I said, going on the second week, surely having checked that, uh, you know, in fact, I said things like, okay, did you check the alternator? Because we've been through this with another vehicle before. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I think finally it ended up being the battery. And we, we already had changed out the alternator, starter, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. 
And so um, I'm assuming that surely they have checked for that since obviously starting the car is the issue unless they are completely defunct of brains at all. Well, let me ask you this. So you said you you said it didn't act up in in in, in their facility. So if, if they didn't if it didn't act up, they, they can't accurately check for this problem. So it's still possible the starter could be the issue. Okay, now what do you mean it didn't act up in their facility? Didn't you didn't you just say that a, a minute ago? You said it didn't act up in their facility when when it was with them. No, I did no. I okay. said that it did. When I oh, got okay. the book, came back and tried and tried to start the car parked under their yeah you know, whatever their porta cachet or carport whatever and it wouldn't start. So they got to see what I've been experiencing oh, okay. for the last two weeks. That's what I just said. All and right. They did see it. So all right. Th th thanks for clearing that up. So what I would ask them is, did they check for power down at the starter when it didn't start? Because that's really the, that would be the correct test. And if they did, then what? My question as a technician would be, what were the, what were the results? Did it have power? Or did not have power? If it doesn't have power, then yeah, we got an issue with that starting circuit, and something further upstream is needs to be diagnosed and and resolved. So they should be able to pinpoint it if the problem acted up for them. So I would kind of, I would I would kind of put the squeeze okay, on them a little exactly bit. Exactly what to ask them about the. What question should I ask them again about the starter? What should I say? So when the vehicle didn't start, uh -huh. did the starter have power? Did the starter have problems? So in other words, the only way they can detect that, I mean, obviously pushing the button, I see that it, you know, lit, lit up. But how can they detect that? They, they go down, they actually take their voltmeter, they go down to the starter and they measure voltage when an assistant tries to start the engine. So when the starters should activate, it, it, it should uh -huh. receive battery voltage on, there's a small wire and there's a big wire. All right, now when it's working normally, uh -huh. it's gonna have power on the big wire and the small wire. But the, more, the, the important thing here is that, that, it, that they check it when the problem occurs, when it's not cranking over. And um, they should have done that, if, especially if it, you know, if it acted up when this happened in their, in their care. So in other words, when it doesn't start, needs to have a voltmeter connected to the starter mechanism? Yep. Let's see if Is there's power down saying? at the starter. That's correct. Okay. As far as I know, they didn't do that. Okay. I would definitely, yeah, I would ask them that. You can put they, a, put the squeeze on them the a little car, bit. They, they connected it to what they said was their higher voltage, you know, the little things that are standalone. Mm -hmm. chargers and then the big one I guess they have in their shop so okay. all they did was recharge the battery I guess again and I drove it home and they're just sitting there shaking their heads not knowing what to do gotcha okay so what I'm telling you is they need to, they need to check that so that's what that's that's the next step okay well that's pretty hard I mean I don't know how you make that happen whenever the car won't start you know you, you gotta jump the battery off to get it started and i mean that was probably <laughs> a missed opportunity is what you're saying so when what we were there i mean so wait happened. to get the engine started they have to jump the battery yeah then you can't start the car but jumping the battery every time okay so if, if you have to jump the battery every time well then then something's so then we have an issue with with either the battery and if the battery was replaced then either we have a bad connection at the battery or something is pulling current from the battery causing yeah, the battery to drain exactly what we have been saying all along okay something uh, is pulling current out of the battery okay so what they need to do is they need to run a battery draw test yeah okay so they need to run a battery draw test and and that's what you need to tell them to do and and again, it's possible the ba the battery, the draw is intermittent. So, and again, they should know this, but you can tell them um, they need to run the battery draw test when the problem occurs. And they may look at you and say, well, it's intermittent. Then you look back at them and say, well, please fix it. I'm going to leave the car with you until you can resolve the problem. And it may take several days. It may take even longer because that's that's what intermittent problems do. 
So you're gonna have to leave it with them until they they can they can run this test accurately yeah, where they can I pinpoint the problem. I tried to do yesterday and told them please check everything out. Because I, I had left it there like on Monday. Okay. And this is what Thursday left it mm -hmm. there. All that time they had to check it out. So I get what you're saying, but I also get the constraint that okay, well if it starts when it's there, <laughs> you know. How, how do they figure that? How do they figure that out right. without it being? Like I said yesterday was a missed opportunity, in that it was there, but um, you know I don't I don't know whether they don't have the knowledge, the mechanical knowledge. I don't know. I mean, I'm at the point where my next step was going to be replace the battery, and then maybe take it to another Nissan dealership because mm -hmm. obviously they're not able to right well as long as if they load tested the battery and it checks out good then the problem is not the battery then again you just haven't double checked the, the cables and well, connections see we not only did that at the nissan place then my husband said okay let's take it someplace else and see what they say and mm -hmm. the battery tested good in fact it was the place where we purchased it thinking okay if it's bad you know what they do prorate the whatever right yeah they prorate the it yep. okay. anyway and what they said the battery checked out good okay all right so you know we've had two different places separate places check the battery and both are telling us it's good okay yeah so so it's real simple the battery's not the problem so if the battery's losing charge then th th there's a battery draw well, or drain draw. huh then it, yeah what? if the, if okay so if the battery checks out good but they still have to jump the battery to get it started, then it's likely that something's pulling current from the battery when the when the engine's turned turned right. off. So they right. need to run a battery draw test. That since the beginning, that's why they started with the brake sensor. Okay. Because they said, okay, maybe the brake sensor's not working correctly and it's drawing down on the battery. Right. Okay. Then they said, well, it it you know after the brake sensor thing got a new one, then they said, well, we need to replace the bulbs in the tail light, the brake light which made some sense to us, not a whole lot, but so we did that. And still, you know, the, the day that I take it there yesterday, it won't start in their facility. Right. So obviously something is, but how do you diagnose what's causing the battery to be drawn down? And something is. This is, done, this is done using a voltmeter. So what they do is they disconnect the battery cable from the battery, you know, the negative cable from the battery, and then they'll put their voltmeter uh -huh. in series between the, the, the battery post and uh, the, the cable, and they'll, they'll measure milliamps, and they'll measure the current. And then they, they just leave it alone with their meter on. They walk away, and you can actually, there's a, there's a feature on the voltmeter they can hit record. They can walk away, and they can leave the vehicle for hours. So that is how you diagnose a battery drain. Okay, let me get, I need to get this on paper because obviously they don't get it. Right. Uh, they need to connect, they need to disconnect the battery, is that what you're saying? Yeah, disconnect the negative battery cable from the negative battery post. Uh huh. And then, and then and put then a voltmeter. And connect meter. a voltmeter. Voltmeter? Yeah, a voltmeter. Okay, what are they connecting it to? So one one wire or lead from the voltmeter will go to the battery post that they just disconnected the cable from, and then the other uh -huh. lead of the voltmeter will go to the cable that they just removed from the battery. So you're measuring the current okay. that's being pulled from the battery. Okay. All right. Um, can you tell me if... Uh, I mean, I, I can, uh, let me, hold on just a second. Would you say that once more to my husband? Because I, I'm not being mechanically inclined, but <laughs> I have a hard time explaining all of that. Tell, tell him what you just said about how they can figure out what's drawing down the battery. Can you tell him that? Yeah, I'm happy to. But just so you know, they're mechanics. They know how to do this. Maybe they didn't do the test. I don't know. You'll have to ask them. Again, I'll explain everything. It's called a battery draw test. All right, so it's it's a, or a current draw test. They, I, I mean, this is like 
um, asking a dentist if he knows how to clean teeth. Of course he's gonna know how to clean teeth. <clears throat> so anyway, to do this test, what needs to be done is they remove the negative battery cable from the negative battery post. All right, so now they're six inches away and now they take their voltmeter and they take one lead of the voltmeter, they put it on the post that was just disconnected. You know, the battery or the cable was just disconnected from. They take their other lead of the voltmeter and they put it on the cable that was just disconnected from the, the post at the battery. And then they put their, their the meter on milliamps or the amps setting to measure current. All right, and then they just, they, they turn the meter on and they just leave it sit for hours and they walk away. There's a button on, the, on their fancy dancy um, voltmeter that they can record this, the reading. And after the, everything goes to sleep on the car, there should be a, you know, it should be less than like 50 milliamps. All right, anything more than like two or three amps would be a significant battery drain. Hey, he got. Okay, he no problem. He thinks he's stuck into a robot. I trust him. He's not a robot. <laughs> um, okay, do you understand what he's saying? That how they can do that? Okay. Okay. He said, "Well, it still doesn't tell you where the draw is." So what they do? Yeah, that's the first part of the first part of the test. What happens is after they let's just say they run the test that I just explained, and there's like three or four, five, 10 amps, whatever the case is, there's a significant battery drain. Then they go to the fuse box and they pull one fuse at a time until the battery draw goes away. And then you know what particular circuit the draw is on. And then from there, they can pull a wiring diagram from the factory service information and they can look at all the components on that particular circuit and they can unplug, go to each one of those components and unplug one of those components at a time until the battery draw goes away and then they know which component is causing the battery to drain. And yes, and I know what you're gonna say, oh, the problem's intermittent and it's gonna to be tough for them. I never said it was gonna be easy. This is what mechanics deal with all day long. It's not easy to do, if, especially if the problem's intermittent, but that is the procedure. Okay, I think he understands it. Uh, I guess our next problem is uh, finding a mechanic that um, <laughs> I mean, why do I? Why am I dealing with a Nissan dealership and they don't know how to take care of all this? I don't <clears> get that. <throat> yeah, and yeah. that's a good question. I, I don't know. I can't speak for them. You know, you'll have to ask them. Um, I mean, obviously the dealerships are paid flat rate, so they're they're likely in a hurry, and they maybe they don't want to spend time on it. I'm, I'm, that's just my assumption. Um, again, uh, in their defense, maybe it's not acting up, so they they keep looking at you and but they but it did act up for them when it was in. So I don't know. You'll have to talk with them. I, I don't know. But any any qualified mechanic that that knows elect, you know electrical can run this test. It doesn't have to go to the Nissan dealership. Um, All right, you bet. You're welcome. Bye -bye. Good luck. Okay. Bye bye. Okay.